Hey guys, so my name is Ashley Cook and I'm going to be talking about singleness. Um, I um, am doing this for a women's time for SLP 2020. However, if you are married or if you're a guy, you're welcome to be watching this. There's nothing in this that maybe wouldn't be helpful or anything like that. So feel free. Um, I hope that you can um, be helped by this as well. Um, but this is going to be a little bit more geared toward women and specifically geared toward single women. Um, and so I um, have been single um, all my life. So I'm 31 years old. And uh, for a long time, I've heard a lot of the narrative of the girl comes to Christ, she spends some time single and then gets married shortly after college. Um, and in fact, that seems to be one of the most commonly lived out narratives. And um, so it, for my life, I've questioned, is that the, the right way? Is that the only right way? Or is that the, the way that um, is the most godly thing to do? Um, and I think God has been really good in granting me an extended period of singleness. Um, though it hasn't come without its hardships, um, I think through this, it has helped me to see other people live out um, this narrative and get advice and wisdom from them as well. And so this is kind of what I want this to be is just a time of hearing some of my story, how God has um, grown me um, and um, how this extended period of singleness has restored um, both a view of singleness and marriage um, and have a deeper reverence for both gifts, um, but most importantly, a fuller view of God. Um, and so I just want to share my story and then kind of some helpful tips to live out your singleness effectively for God, um, to love him and to serve him. So my story kind of as it pertains to singleness. So I grew up in a church going home. Uh, we went to church every Sunday and I knew every Bible story there was to know that was taught in Sunday school. Um, I also knew every Disney princess story there ever was to know. Um, so I grew up in the days of Disney princesses landing the handsome prince. So Snow White singing, someday my prince will come, someday I'll find my love, was as real to me as Jesus raising the little girl from the dead. So I don't know if you'll be able to relate to this. I hope you don't have the Disney princess syndrome as deeply as I do. Um, but if you do, I want you to know you're not alone. Um, so even whenever I was in college, uh, whenever Tangled came out, I um, remember watching uh, Rapunzel come down um, the tower with her love interest and singing, that's when my life begins. And there's something in my DNA that deeply agreed. And I hope I'm not making myself sound crazy. Um, but I want to stress that I had a very skewed view of what I thought relationships were. And I really thought that that's what I needed to be happy in life. And so, um, upon entering college, I started dating a guy or sorry, um, sorry, I had really no idea what it meant to be a Christian. Um, and I started dating a guy that I thought was my handsome prince and I was very wrong. Um, but God was sweet to even use that to help me, um, understand that I was just in a desperate state without him. So I was putting all of my hope, um, in someone that I thought was temporary or someone I was putting all my hope in someone and that someone was temporary um, instead of putting all of my hope in Jesus in a relationship with him, which is eternal. Um, but whenever I started attending campus outreach uh, meetings, I think I came back even then um, because of how I saw the guys treating the girls. Um, however, it was also the first time that I really heard um, the bad news of the gospel, which sounds contradictory because um, it literally translates to good news, but um, I had heard that Jesus's death wasn't just, um, something that he needed to do to make me a better person, but it was my, I was so sinful that Jesus's death was a requirement. Um, and I realized that he didn't come just to make me a better person. Um, but he came, he came to completely wreck the old Ashley so that he could make a new Ashley, um. So after I um, trusted in Jesus and um, started wanting to invest in a relationship with him and grow in my relationship with him, um, so I attended two summer projects with Campus Outreach, um, one as a participant and one as a T-group leader. Um, I invested in a few friendships that have enormously impacted who 
uh, or how I follow Jesus and who I am today. Um, I've shared the gospel with many women, um, even saw a few of them trust in Jesus while I was in college. Um, I went on many group dates um, and still um, enjoy those friendships that I built with the, my Christian brothers at, uh, while I was in college. Um, upon graduation, I committed to go to Thailand, um, where I was a teacher for two years, and I taught the children of missionaries there, um, and I was able to do that freely because I wasn't dating um, anyone, and so I had to consider how that might impact another person. Um, and while I was in college and in Thailand, I was uh, discipled by four different women, um, and then coming back from Thailand, I was still not dating anyone. Um, and I chose to come on Southwood Campus Outreach Columbus, and I was free to move. I didn't have to consider um, where I might need to move to or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then while I've been on staff, um, I've had the opportunity to see 17 women um, profess faith and grow in their walks with um, their Savior because of me being able to share the gospel with them, um, as well as the opportunity to share my faith with many other women. I just haven't seen what God um, will do uh, with how I've gotten to, or with what I've gotten to share with them. Um, so I want to be really clear. Over the past 10 years of my Christian life, I've displayed mild obedience coupled with kicking and screaming um, about being single. So God has just been gloriously faithful and patient with me. Um, he's been, uh, he's given me heroes to look up to, um, to show how God uses the goodness of singleness um, so one of those, I have three of those people that I want to share with you. One of them is Mary Slessor. Um, she's one of the first uh, women, I think actually she was one of, she was the first woman to go inland in Africa. Um, and she um, had a guy that was repairing a window in her home. I think it was a window, I'm almost positive, but I was repairing something in her home and he wanted to pursue her, but that pursuit would have taken her away from that ministry away from that mission and so she ended up declining his uh, pursuit because she wanted to be at her mission she wanted to do what she was uh, she wanted to be doing what she was doing um to serve god um which is just heroic to me um, that she was so set on her mission um william borden um who while he was in college he led just a huge revival at yale university um, and started a prayer meeting of a few students, a handful of students that ended up being, um, I think it was like a thousand students were at his prayer meetings uh, whenever he was a senior. And while he um, was in college, um, and well, right before and right and when he was in college, he wrote no reserves and no retreats um, while he was um, in college. And then right after he traveled to a couple of different places to share the gospel with um, people that hadn't heard before um, and who contracted spinal meningitis and right before he died in his Bible he had penned no regrets um, so he was 25 whenever he passed away was not married um, and he had no regrets of living his life as fearlessly um, and without reserves as he could um, for God and then probably my favorite person in the whole wide world is Helen Ozevier um, if you ever get a chance just even YouTube her um, interviews, some of her last interviews, and she is just a woman that just completely displays that she was passionately in love with Jesus. Um, but she, in one of her interviews, talks about how um, compared to some women who were with her that were um, serving alongside her, she was a doctor. Um, so she would go into places where people had a lot of diseases, were very, very sick, um, and sometimes places that it could have been very dangerous. Um, could have contracted some diseases. Um, so she was able to go in um, to those places without any fear, uh, whereas women that were with her were more reserved because they were afraid of maybe what they could catch that could um, be caught by their children at home or how that could impact how they could serve and love their families. And so um, she was free to go and serve and be used by God and didn't have um, that extra factor of thinking, oh, how's this going to affect my family, which is a loving thing to think, and so it's not a wrong thing, um, but Helen was able to go and serve without fear. Um, so God has been gracious to provide um, people in my life to look up to, to say, wow, I really would love to serve Jesus like that. Um, so he didn't give up on me. He still grew me in spite of my reluctance. Um, he still did what was best for me, even whenever I didn't understand what that was and complained the whole time. 
Um, and I can say with confidence, if I could go back and tell my 20 year old self one thing, it would be this. Um, singleness may not be what you have hoped for, but you will be filled with so much joy. Um, singleness will not be easy, but it will be beautiful and you will regret nothing of living your life obediently and freely to God. What you will regret are the years of being stubborn and the opportunities you missed because of not accepting this gift with gratitude. So I say all of that, not to brag or say, look at all that I've done, but just to introduce a new narrative. You will never be as free as you are to be used by God when you are single. Marriage is not, 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 not the reward of singleness well done or purity well fought for. The reward of singleness and purity is getting to experience more of Jesus. So whenever I talk about fear, or sorry, whenever I talk about singleness, it usually comes out of a place of fear. I have a fear that God won't provide. I have a fear that all meaningful community will slowly yet surely leave me as more of, and more of my friends get married and I enter into stages of life and they enter into stages of life that I simply can't relate to. Um, I have a fear that as long as I'm single, others will look at me and see this giant stamp across my forehead that reads unlovable. I have a fear that the gift of marriage hasn't been given to me because God would have to allow someone else into this mess and he just cannot simply do that to someone else. Um, and I might laugh, you might laugh, but these are all legitimate thoughts that have crossed my mind and maybe they have crossed yours too. Um, and I want to say that's not you're not crazy for having those thoughts. Um, but when the apostle Paul talks about singleness, it is not out of fear. And in fact, it could not be further from his thought. Um, so he says in first Corinthians seven, seven through eight, I wish all of you were as I am single, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift and one has that, uh, meaning marriage or singleness. Um, now to the unmarried and to the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. So Paul, who was single, calls it a gift, not a consequence or a curse, a gift, even a gift that can be better than marriage for some. So what kind of gift would this be? So I have a super fun, quirky aunt who gives me presents every year on my birthday. And at a minimum, they could be described as interesting. Um, so most recently for my birthday, oops, most recently for my birthday, she got me this spray painted dinosaur. I'm going to show you guys <laughs> this guy right here. So I don't know if you can maybe tell from my aesthetic, maybe just when you go, but she has got me this spray painted, um, toy dinosaur with a succulent glued to its back. Um, and I just, I don't really know where it's going to go in my room. I, it's not really the aesthetic that I was going for. Though it's really, really fun, and I really, um, my aunt is so thoughtful and uh, always gets me things that are very fun. Um, and my sister and I have um, some birthdays that are close together, and she got, um, this is actually hers, I cannot find mine, go figure. But, um, so whenever I asked my sister what she was going to do with it, she said, I'm going to put it on a shelf in my entertain entertainment um, center. And my response was, I don't really have a place where I think it would go. And she responded, Ashley, it either goes with everything, it goes with nothing. And I think this might be a little bit of how we've approached um, singleness. There's fireworks outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but um, it either goes with everything or it goes with nothing. Um, so we think if we open the gift of singleness, that means that we have to completely say no to marriage. And some of us, myself included, um, have a certain aesthetic that we thought our lives would have. And this dinosaur gift of singleness has just left us a little confused as to how to decorate. <laughs> um, so many of us has approached this gift with, of singleness with our arms crossed saying it goes with nothing. And so we refuse to use it. God is sovereign, good, and wise. If these are true about God, which they are, then there must be a purpose to each individual's life, including those that are single. So God knows your dreams. He allowed you to dream them. He um, knows your gifting. He knit you together. And he knows your stage of life. He planned it before time began. So my question is, how do you maximize this gift? Instead of just sitting there with your arms crossing, I'm not going to use it. Um, 
how do you treat this gift that God has given you with reverence and carefulness? And how do you not waste it? So I'm operating off this quote that I heard whenever I was in college that goes, master, mission, mate. Um, and so I want to spend some time talking about um, how to know your master deeply. I want to know, I want to spend some time talking about how to invest in your mission well. And then I want to talk about and maybe change the quote a little bit and say, maybe mate. Um, so we don't know. It's not promised. Um, but maybe mate. <laughs> so. Um, so first off in the master section, commit to know God deeply. Um, so whenever Mary and Martha, we probably have all heard that story, um, but Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha was busy doing a lot of other things. I think it was like cooking food and doing some other stuff, but Mary chose to sit at Jesus's feet and Jesus said that this portion would not be taken away from Mary. Um, so this might sound super cheesy, but have you fallen deeply in love with Jesus? Before you enter into a relationship with a, a sinner, um, have you secured the right relationship with Jesus? So Zephaniah 3.17 um, says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who can save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I think of Buddy the Elf whenever he's in the department store and he sings loudly, I'm in the store and I'm singing. Um, so whenever I hear this quote, that's what I think of. And I can't help but think of if I heard someone in public doing that, my eyes would immediately go directly toward them. Um, I would be distracted because of how funny that might be or how silly that might sound. Um, but I don't know if you think about this, that... Um, or like the other buddy, the elf quote that says, um, I'm in love and I'm, I'm in love and I don't care who knows it. If someone was sitting right next to you shouting that, people would be distracted by how much you are loved. Um, and so God in this uh, verse says, I will um, exult over you with loud singing. So that is the kind of love that God loves you with, is the buddy, the elf, distracting, um, goofy, lovely kind of love. Um, so sink deeply into that love, into God's love. Um, and then right now as a single person, you are undivided and undistracted um, in a pursuit of God. So in 1 Corinthians 7, 5, 7, 35, um, chapter 7, verse 35, um, says, or Paul says, or it continues in singleness, he says, I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you might live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. So Paul isn't saying, don't get married, you're not allowed to get married. He's not saying this to add restrictions to you, but to cultivate the best situation for you to know God and be free to serve him. Um, the second to know your master well is to pray. Um, so Elizabeth Elliot has a quote in her book, The Path of Loneliness, that says, turn your loneliness into solitude and your solitude into prayer. So I just want to lay it out. There will, of course, be times in singleness where you will be lonely and it'll be hard. But to mentally prepare and say, instead of wallowing in this loneliness, that is real. Um, turn it into aloneness and turn that into times of prayer where you can be talking and communing with God. Um, also, use this time to heal. So do you, like I do, did and do, um, have a skewed view of singleness or marriage? Um, do you have wrong expectations because of romantic comedies or even Disney princesses? Um, and I just want to invite you, something that I've done is I've really tried to scale back or to like even have seasons where I stop watching um, rom-coms or Disney movies um, because they, they feed that wrong view of singleness. They feed that wrong view of marriage. Um, and so I don't know if it needs to be an absolute conviction that you have, but it has definitely been helpful for me um, to not have a wrong view of what a relationship really looks like. Um, another thing to heal from is sexual impurity. So in this, I would just invite you to pursue holiness. And I want to be really, really gentle here. Um, there is no sin too great to drain dry the ocean of God's grace. And so um, if there are things that are in your past that you're ashamed of or you're grieved over, Jesus is also grieved um, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And there is nothing um, that is too great or too terrible that you have done that you can't come um, to the throne of grace and 
and wants a relationship with him and he will absolutely reciprocate um and not even he's he's pursued you first and so um and then also to pursue purity for the sake of purity so i think a lot of times we have this mentality of if i pursue purity it will be for later marriage and so sometimes we think oh it, it doesn't really matter if i don't want to get married or something like that um, but purity uh, is for god and a deeper relationship with him so pursue that um, without necessarily marriage um, being the reason why but also uh, married people problems are just single people problems that single people bring into marriage and so to deal with some of the things that maybe are in your past um, so that you can later bless the marriage if you were to get married um, and then also a heal from discontentment um, so just a thought discontentment does not go away um, whenever you get married um, it just morphs into different things and so um, deal with discontentment now while you're single and you're not harming someone else with this discontentment deal with it now um get to the root of that sin now um well while it's easier um and you can run to um, the throne of grace with that um and then also learn to love and be less self-centered um so a thing that you can do is get discipled um so if you aren't already being discipled, go to someone that knows a little bit more about the Bible than you and say, hey, can you help me? Can you help me and point out areas where I might be operating out of self-sufficiency? Can you expose sinful habits that are in me? Can you help me to understand how I walk with Jesus and love him well? Um, and another way is to disciple yourself. So I cannot tell you how many things that I've learned because of being someone that has um, been discipling other women, um, having them ask questions that I haven't immediately known the answer to, or having them um, want to learn how to share their faith, because consequently that makes me learn how to share my faith better. Um, and so definitely been a way that has been, um, God, God has grown me and helped me to see how to walk with him better is because I've had other people wanting to learn um, too. And so I've gotten to walk with them in that learning. Um, get a roommate and ask them. So I'm 1 million percent in the um, camp that all single people should have a roommate um, because having a roommate reveals areas where you are not considering or preferring another. So ask that roommate, are there quirks in me that need to die for God's kingdom? Um, are there ways that you can serve that person that maybe you're not aware of? Maybe you leave the towel on the floor all the time or maybe you um, can have roommate dinners and you can um, learn how to talk and um, really investigate this other person's heart so that you can um, become better at serving the other person. Um, and where you may be needing to prefer another and learning to die to your own desires so that um, someone else, you can help some other, someone else to um, have a fuller view of God. And also get a best friend and invest deeply in that relationship. So I have a couple of really good friends uh, from college, but one of my best friends and I, we talked about um, how thankful we were that we were both single while we were in college because the, the amount of time that we might have spent dating, we got to just hang out with each other. Um, and that relationship spurred us on and cut off sin. Um, and we were able to run really, really well. And even I was talking to her last week, um, the relationship that we still have, that we invested in deeply, um, we are still benefiting from um, how deep we were in that relationship. Um, and also be honest with this person. So use them as a running partner. So whenever you're running um, and you're maybe feeling a little tired and you don't wanna continue to run, the other person can say, no, don't give up. Um, so be honest where you are. So maybe you are, in this example, longing for marriage in an unhealthy way. Um, and that person can tell you, hey, turn your eyes on Jesus um, because he really is worthy of this pursuit um, in singleness. Um, and so mission. So I want to invite you, figure out what your mission is. So first of all, what is the purpose of your life? Regardless of where you are, this is the person, blah, blah, blah purpose for every, but every Christian's life, um, and that is to glorify God in all that you do. But where are you particularly passionate? What lights a fire in your bones? Where are you talented and gifted? Um, so where 
in all of those places, where could you possibly serve? Um, so single people operate like pickup trucks and they work and run best when they are hauling something. Um, so we are designed to do work and to do a lot of work. Um, and so as a single person, how can you be sent? Um, so what is stopping you from hearing about this people group that hasn't heard the gospel and going to that country? Um, what is stopping you from getting a call at 1 a.m. Um, from the girls or guys dorm and this person has called you uh, with this problem? Maybe they're crying. Maybe they broke up with their boyfriend, girlfriend. What is stopping you from going, going to that dorm? Nothing. Um, you can freely go. You don't have someone that you have to ask or people that you have to care for or a two-year-old that you shouldn't leave alone. Um, and I just want to say, if I ever have physical children of my own, I have been trained to love them better because of the spiritual children that I have now. And so um, I have learned how to care for them well at 1 a.m. whenever they call me crying. Um, and so whenever, if ever I have physical children, I can care for them better because I've already learned how to do that. Of course, it'll be different, but the, the analogy still works. Um, so definitely know your mission, figure out where you're equipped, where you're designed, um, what really lights a fire um, and gets you excited about serving God. And then maybe mate. So I want to talk about this a little bit. A mate is not promised, um, but you are also not promised that you're going to be single forever, forever either. Um, so the question I think a lot of people have is, how do you know if you're meant to be single? Um, and I want to say, if you're single today, then today you have the gift of singleness. And that's just how you know. So also, I think sometimes uh, we we want the gift of marriage because it reveals um, a different part of the gospel um, than maybe singleness does. But there's a quote that I heard one time, I have no idea where, but um, it's marriage reveals the shape of the gospel, but singleness reveals the sufficiency of the gospel. So I would just wanna invite you to evaluate your heart and your desire for marriage because both are good and both gifts are good and both gifts reveal different parts and aspects of the gospel. And also be honest with yourself. If you're desiring marriage more than God, repent of that and don't just sit there. So I think something that I'm doing daily is figuring out, is this an idol in my heart and how do I repent of that? But then also come to God with the longings that I have. Um, and as you're looking for a mate, it is helpful to have both your, both a deep relationship with God and your mission figured out because you're looking for, like if you are looking for a running partner, you're gonna be looking for a running partner that maybe runs the same speed as you or could even like be an encouragement to continue to run. And so whenever you're looking for someone like that, you're not just looking for someone that is just gonna play golf or something. Um, you're gonna look for someone that wants to do the same thing as you. So look for someone that's gonna help you in your mission. Um, that doesn't mean that you, I don't know, have to find someone that loves everything that you do. You're absolutely not gonna be able to do that, but um, to help you with your purpose, to glorify God in all that you do, you wanna be able to um, do that together. Um, and so um, do this, um, sorry. Also, you can invest deeply as a single person and still use this gift of singleness and want to get married. Um, so this doesn't mean if you invest really, really well now, it doesn't mean that you have to completely give up and say, okay, then this means I'm not gonna ever wanna get married. Um, and you can long to get married and it not be an idol. Um, and I wanna say this, your longing can teach you to long for your heavenly groom more. Um, and it can also teach you that nothing on earth is going to satisfy, um, and that is going to include a husband or a wife. Um, and it is also, um, God doesn't waste anything. So the investments that you make uh, while you're single will only bless your marriage later if you get married. And if you don't get married, you will only get to invest more and more and more deeply in this relationship with Jesus. Um, and just to think about you are being made more into his image um, and more into the beautiful bride that will get married to him in heaven. I mean, just even, I've thought about this too, that um, if you don't get married, 
before you go to heaven, your first wedding will be in heaven, which is really, really sweet. Um, and there's a quote um, that I think I think of a lot whenever um, I just think of living a, a well-lived life, um, but also just think, what would it look like to live a well-lived singleness? Um, and there's a quote, I think it's by C.T. Stead. I forgot to put that in here, but I'm almost positive that's who it's by. Um, but it says, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. Um, and so I, I want to just even say, how can you apply that to how you're living your life now as a single person? Um, you are so free and effective to be used by God and to deeply invest in a relationship with Him. Um, there is nothing that is distracting you from that. Um, while other, while married people are distracted because they're thinking of um, their spouse or they're thinking of maybe their family, um, we really are free to invest deeply and to not be thinking um, of someone else. And one of my um, married friends just even shared with me that one of the things that she um, didn't realize was going to be kind of a hard, harder thing to figure out um, was that now as a married um, person, she is having to think my relationship with God is also uh, impacted by my husband and it's um, our relationship with God. And so she's navigating what does that need to look like. And so as a um, single, we are allowed to, um, not allowed, we are free to not really think about how another person is doing or um, my spouse's um, spiritual well-being, but we are really free to invest deeply in, um, yeah, just our relationship with Jesus, and we're not really thinking about anything else. Um, and so, yeah, I would even um, invite you to have that quote or the quote of uh, William Borden that um, no reserves, no retreats, no regrets. So how could those words shape how you live your singleness um, deeply and investing well um, and living freely and um, purposefully um, as a single. Um, just thinking that marriage is not the reward of it well done. Um, and this is a time um, that you don't know um, how long you're going to have. And so like I just said this quote, but only one life will, will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And so um, I even just have a personal thought of like, you don't know whenever your singleness will be over. So it could be another year or it could be another 60 years. Um, but we want to say, well, how can I live my life that I'm not just waiting like Rapunzel was to leave the tower and say, this is where my life begins. Um, but I want to say, okay, God, you have, I don't know how long to use me as a single person. And I want to look I want to live and be used so effectively. Um, so I um, have a list of um, uh, resources that I've kind of compiled, and I'm gonna. I hope that they're gonna be um, in uh, the link that's below. And if they're not, um, hopefully it'll just be my contact info, so I can just send that to you. And if you have any questions, I would much prefer to have this kind of conversation over a cup of coffee or um yeah just talking about this more deeply so if you have any thing that you're like Ashley I really have no idea what you're talking about I don't know how to do this well um I've struggled with this for a long time and even now I can tell you this is coming out of a place where I've just been struggling with the um, singleness a lot and so it is a good thing um to be running to um your savior with um but also if you need to talk about things if you're like i really have no idea what's going on and i want to do this rightly and well um i would love to be having more conversations with you so um please don't don't hesitate to um reach out um to me or any other staff member that might um be someone that you're more connected with uh, we would love to have conversations with you all right i love you and i will see you uh soon bye